people are a bit bored of short form content. When I do get an idea, I realize, fuck, like that's already been done before. I think I was 13 or 14 where I kind of decided YouTube is where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. I think YouTube is a longer path that I think definitely more rewarding. I'm currently working on a new project with Sony. The fact that this is my fifth project in 13 months which is just insane to me. I actually went to Portugal to film a video vlog short film about slash for my friend Julia Gardner, who is an amazing photographer and filmmaker. I switched to the niche resolve. Yes, I said it. Okay, hello, hello. Um, it's been a little while. Um, I have no idea where the time goes, to be fair. Um, but yeah. Hello, welcome to TYC, aka Trust Your Choices podcast. Um, you know what? I kind of decided to turn my camera on just now because, to be fair, I've been feeling a little bit, I don't know, just, I guess, some sort of creative rut. Um, and I was kind of like, oh, I just want to, just kind of want to express my feelings and maybe just also catch up on what I've been up to and what has been going on. Um, but actually something that popped into my head was, so two weeks ago, I've done my first ever talk. Um, I've been invited to the photography show by Sony and Nisi. And I've never even been to the photography show. And so having the opportunity to do four talks there was kind of crazy. Um, I'll dive a little bit deeper into those talks in a minute, but it was interesting because when I was doing the talks, it was basically, the talks were about social media, filmmaking, and how you can work with brands, um, which are the three topics, I mean, my favorite topics to talk about. Um, and... As I was doing the talks, um, I think I kept it pretty real um, and I was being honest. I, I don't know. I, I just think like I was given the opportunity to show my best self, let's say. And I wanted to take that opportunity to kind of be really real with people and I don't know, just tell things the way they are. Um, and sometimes, sometimes that means that sometimes things aren't going right or you, you can be a little bit quirky. And I really try to incorporate that into my talks. And I guess this is also why I'm kind of doing this podcast be because I've been just feeling a little bit uninspired and not really in my best place, let's say. So I wanted to just have a little talk with myself, with whoever's watching. Um, but yeah, and after... After, I think, one of the talks, um, Harriet and Duncan came up to me. Now, they are two people who come to basically every single UK Shooters event. And they were also the, at the photography show um, to two of my talks, which was really nice. So thank you. Um, and Duncan said to me how much he appreciated that I kept it real. And... Um, actually, when he first started talking to me, I wasn't really sure where he was going. And then when he said that, I thought that was so, so kind. Um, you know, it's one thing someone saying to you, oh, I love your work. Um, but it's, but it's really, it just means and it just feels different when someone maybe says something like that. You know, the fact that, I don't know, I kept it real or I was just honest and kind of like really try to show that not everything is perfect because of course as I mentioned you're kind of given the opportunity to be able to show off or be your best self which you still are but you know kind of having the opportunity not to show off but actually to to let people know that what you're doing they're also able to do and I think um you know I moved to London three years ago and a little bit over three years ago, and I had no idea what I was doing. I feel like I have no, I had no idea what I was doing up until a year ago, maybe 10 months ago, um, when things kind of really started opening up for me um, because I posted a reel. <laughs> um, so, 
yeah and this was also a topic something that I was talking in my talk um because a lot of the times you get asked like oh is it still worth posting um you know like can you still grow and for me posting on Instagram and still not having many followers like literally changed my life um so yes now Okay, that was a little catch up on the photography show. Um, yes, I was really, I was quite nervous before my talks, um, but my best friend Pika, she did the coolest presentation for me. And I think that literally knowing that that presentation was good and even if I fuck up was like, it's still gonna be okay because the presentation was so good. So um, yeah, that helped a lot. Um, but yes, I think, I think it made me realize that I want to do more of that um, and that it's not that scary. And even if it's a little bit scary, it's okay because you kind of like, if it wasn't scary and if you weren't nervous, that would be weird. Um, so yeah, I have a few things written down on my phone that I thought of when I was doing my makeup five minutes ago before I started filming this. So yeah, as I was saying about just reels in general and how it changed my life, um, over the past, to be fair, half a year maybe, I haven't really done anything for myself. And by that I mean doing passion projects, things that, you know, don't involve working with brands and the things that you just do because you just want to and because it's something that you almost need to, it's almost like an itch that you need to scratch. Um, and I haven't really done that. Um, in fact, I can't think of anything that feels like that. And again, great problem to have, not complaining. And two weeks ago, um, I actually went to Portugal to film a video vlog, short film uh, about slash for my friend Julia Gardner, who is an amazing photographer and filmmaker, uh, because she was hosting a women only workshop. Um, that was her second year in a row that she was doing that. And I had the most amazing time ever. And I haven't had such a good time in a really long time. Um, it was just like there were eight women from all over the world, from US, from Europe, from Canada. Um, it was really, really cool. And... It was really cool and I guess it just made me, I don't know, I, I, I was really, really inspired and it was also really nice because Julia allowed me to be really part of the workshop and she really appreciated my opinion and she it felt like she trusted me because um, I was basically just there to film and be in the background and film the BTS, but I think... At the end, I was way more involved than I thought I would be. And it was actually really nice. And um, it was just really nice to be able to also share my knowledge to people who want to get to where we are. Um, and just really giving them an insight and being real um, on how you can make it in this industry. And I think... Um, it was also just amazing to watch. I, I think for me, it was just crazy the fact that eight women like paid and came from wherever in the world to see and to, you know, do this workshop with Julia. So I'm extremely proud of her. <laughs> and hopefully I can have her on the podcast because actually when we were in the car driving, um, I was... Uh, we were talking and I was like, oh my God, like we should have done a podcast because we just had like such nice conversations um, and she's just really, really just incredible person. Um, and yeah, and I think doing that workshop, it really inspired me and I want to start doing something similar, maybe not on that level, but at least, you know, bring women together because I'm really lacking female women, however you want to say, um, really lacking like women friends. And I didn't really feel that for a long time, but 
like last month I've been asked by artists to create a video for Women's Day and I've never had an issue with being around guys and you know not I guess not um yeah, not having a lot of like women creative friends or just women friends in general. Um, and I was actually at first kind of struggling to make that video because I was like, hmm, I haven't really thought about that much that like, you know. And then as I was like, I had a basically a bit of a hard time scripting that video because I wanted it to be authentic and I actually wanted to say how I felt and I wasn't really sure how I felt. And I think by the end of that project and just having it on my mind for like two weeks, um, it really made me think that I do feel a little bit lonely and it's a weird thing to say, but yeah, I guess, you know, you move to London and you're just kind of like doing your own thing and, um, and I'm actually like around a lot of people, but not women um and so I think I'm really really lacking that and it would actually be nice to have more women friends because I guess I, I guess it's just like you just like get each other on a different level and it's just nice um so yes that's one thing I figured and yesterday I actually went on YouTube and I saw this girl called Unjaded Jade she actually, she actually has like almost a million subscribers and I only found out about her and she I think literally a few days ago moved to London and I watched the first video of hers I've ever seen I've never even seen her before and then I started watching a 30 minute video that she did and I was so invested in that piece of content and yeah it, it's cool she actually just moved to London and she also wants to start a podcast and so I haven't actually me messaged her yet um, but I will as soon as I finish this because she seems incredibly nice and I felt so so connected to her through the video that she posted and I think I think it could lead to a nice friendship um, so yes, I actually need to reach out because you just need to put yourself out there and you just need to, you know, and I think this is also like a tip for if anyone's watching or listening, like this is the way anything in this industry I feel like happens. I've made so, so, so many friendships and worked with brands because someone made the first move, either a brand, either a friend or I did and um and yeah, I think sometimes it's really weird because you don't know someone and you're just like, hey, can I message, like, you know, I'm here messaging you. Um, and then you look back and you're probably really good friends with that person now, which is, which I think is really, really nice. And speaking of YouTube, <laughs> I mean, that has been on my mind since I was like 14, um, maybe less. I think I was 13 or 14 where... When I kind of decided YouTube is where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do, I um, started watching Casper Lee and Joe Sack and I was, uh, I was just like the biggest fan and I've always wanted to be a YouTuber. But I think realistically, like maybe I'm completely wrong, but the way it kind of works for me right now and maybe for others as well or not, is like reels are incredible way to make money and you know, when you make reels, like, yes, you spend a decent enough time on the video. At least I can speak for myself because I think I really aim. I, I like actually creating. And so I invest a lot of the time and effort and money into my work. And so, you know, reels is just easier way for me to have an easier way of income. Whereas I think YouTube is just, as I said, one thing that you don't necessarily like it's it's a it's a longer path that I think is at the end definitely more rewarding um and I feel like also we're gonna get to a point where or maybe we already are at the point where people are a bit bored of short form content I mean everything looks the same like it's boring and I feel like the reason I haven't been making any 
reels for myself as well although I could and I could you know focus on growing my platform and that would be great but when I do get an idea I realize fuck like that's already been done before and yeah that's okay like you shouldn't complicate it that much to the point where you end up not making videos but I think right now like it's just the idea of that doesn't fulfill me and I feel like I'm at the point where I really don't want to do things that don't fulfill me I think it's a bit of a waste of time but then you have on the other side where you need to think about just like growing your business and these are sometimes the things that you will need to do and sacrifice for um I guess that's just what kind of being creator is like so hopefully um my plan <laughs> for the next two months I have quite a little bit of work um, ahead of me for the next I guess for the whole April um, I'm currently working on a new project with Sony which is really cool um, the fact that this is I think my fifth project with Sony in 13 months which is just insane to me um, so very, very excited for that. And that's going to be out on the 16th of April. And then after that, I have two weeks to, I don't really have plans. I need to make one reel for Nisi. And then I'm also going to be editing a short film that I filmed for Julia, which this is just something I'm so, so excited to get started with. Uh, I've done my selects now from like six hours to an hour and a half of footage and I'm so excited to start editing this and also a big, big change, but I switched to DaVinci Resolve. Yes, I said it. I know. I never thought I'd say that, but I've been editing on Premiere Pro for like since 2014 and the main issue I have with Premiere is just that the whole workaround to because I've been coloring in DaVinci for the past two years, but so the way it works, if anyone doesn't know and you want to know, I'm not going to be too technical, but basically you edit in Premiere Pro, or this is what I've been doing, and then you export your timeline, you import it into DaVinci, you color grade your video, and then you just export, as a, export it as a video, and you put that video on top of your timeline in Premiere Pro. But I think... You know, it's really enjoyable when you can edit and you can kind of like see already how the grade is going to look like. Um, also, what happens when you do do that workaround? This means that you won't be like the effects don't copy over from Premiere to DaVinci. So you technically can't do any, let's say, speed ramps because when you then import that video, when you import your timeline into DaVinci, this means that your effects won't copy over so it's just a mess and I think I'm over it um, and since YouTube is where I want to be and one big focus for me is color grading and just a big passion of mine making things like colors look nice I just decided that Da Vinci is the way for me to go um, the, I don't know what I even said so yes I am very excited um, and it's also really nice because I feel like when I open Premiere Pro, like you just kind of like know most of things. I'm not saying, I mean, I know probably 20% of Premiere anyway, but I guess it's just a really nice feeling when you know that there's something you don't know and that you're going to know better as you put more time and effort into spending time in that program. So even though there are certain things I don't know, or, or basically most of the things I don't know in DaVinci, it's just a really nice feeling because I feel like I'm growing and I'm doing something new. Um, and yeah, it's just just really nice feeling. Yes, and then super excited, but with UK Shooters, we're doing a road trip. It's going to be from 11th till the 19th or 18th of May, and we're going to go to four cities. And I'm just so excited. I really, really miss UK Shooters events. I think I'm... It's just nice to be around so many creative people and just just so nice to meet so many people. So, oh, I am so fucking excited. In fact, I can't even lie. Okay, and I guess last thing to address, <laughs> as you can see, I'm sitting here by myself. Um, but long story short, I think 
when Gareth and I started this podcast together uh, a year ago, yes, a year ago we did our first episode that didn't come out for like seven months. That was in September 2023. And then we put out nine episodes. Um, but the idea for the podcast initially came in December 2022, so quite a long time ago. And to be completely transparent, a lot has changed since then. Um, I've changed, Garrett has changed. Um, but I think where I'm at, um, I kind of suggested and was open that I don't want to mix the relationship with everything, like all the projects and everything we do. I don't think it's healthy. Um, and it's really nice when you do things together or when you when you don't work on every, everything together, but then you come together and you do better. And I think that was a little a little thing that was holding me back from being active with the podcast is just because I wasn't really sure if doing it together is a good idea. So we decided that I'll be doing it. F I'll be doing it from now on by myself. <laughs> um, but yes, I think I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about just this new chapter, and in fact, I'm very excited about 2024. I think it's already been a really good year. Um, but yes, so that is just one change. Um, and also with the podcast, initially when we were coming up with the name, my my initial idea was to have a name where, well, okay, let's go a little bit further back. Basically, I always wanted to have like a brand or merch, um, a brand that you start by having merch, let's just say, um, or by starting it through having a podcast. And the way I've done the branding and the fonts and the, the, the just everything has sorry, has always been that with the idea that it's going to look good as merch. But yes, so this is just an update. But yes, I guess that's it for the episode. Um, if you enjoyed, let me know, message me, comment, like, I don't know. Um, but I would love to hear your thoughts. I know this has been very, very different to everything we've done before, but I'm really excited to have get to have guests again. Um, and just, you know, I guess have cinematic, whatever that word means, cinematic lighting with maybe a bunch of grain inhalation. I don't know. Um, but yes, it's been nice to offload and to just speak to the camera and just not think about it too much. Um, I was actually quite nervous at first. Pretty okay now. Um, but just very glad that I've done this um, because I've only thought about it five minutes before I actually started recording. Um, but yes, that's it from my side. Um, maybe see you next week. Maybe not. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to promise. But um, yes, have a good day, evening, morning, whenever you're listening to this. And bye. <laughs> oh yeah, and you can follow me, Taya Lisiak, or Trust Your Choices um, on all platforms and all that jazz. But yes, bye. <laughs>